This is a working night vision halo helmet and today I'm gonna show you how I made it. So I've been a lifelong fan of the Halo video game series from playing Halo Combat Evolved on the original Xbox when it first came out as a kid to binging Halo 5 late nights in college with my friends. And if they ever make a Halo TV series, I hope they do a really good job with it. If they ever make a TV show, which they haven't as far as I care. So I have a friend who runs Enforce Props, the Instagram account company that makes incredibly high quality props and cosplay gear. You can find them on Instagram at Enforce Props. And he sent me a few helmets and a little while back Back, I took an ODST resin cast and put a transparency changing visor and some custom backlighting into that helmet and I sent it back to him. So be sure to check that video out if you haven't seen it before. But the one I'm keeping for myself is my all time favorite model of Halo helmet, the Halo EOD helmet. Finishing this helmet with working night vision would be making two lifelong childhood dreams come true. One, a high quality Halo helmet just like they have in the video games. And then two, working night vision, which is like every kid's dream, right? And now that I have an engineering degree and adult money, I want to try to make them both come true. And I never say this at the beginning of my videos, but if you're enjoying this, please consider leaving a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to help me become the next Hacksmith, consider checking out my Patreon link in the description of the video below. We hit 20,000 subscribers on YouTube this week, and that is unbelievable, and I am so thankful for everyone supporting Lamaster Tech in any way. Now let's check out this build. Now the electrical components required to make this build possible are actually pretty straightforward. Essentially, I just need a low light, no light camera, a computer with a tiny embedded screen on it, and some portable way of powering it. And a few extra challenges I'm giving myself is I want to be able to stream the video feed from the camera back to my desktop so I could record it and get cool shots of the night vision stuff that I'm seeing. And then I'm not setting a specific budget for this project, but I want to keep it overall in the realm of what any hobbyist or maker interested could probably afford. So I'm not going to run out and get like a $6,000 pair of military grade night vision goggles. So let's start with the camera. I definitely heard of infrared vision as a way of seeing thermal imaging or at least in low light situations. But more importantly than what infrared is, is just how easy is it to use for a practical application? And I found a pretty affordable USB infrared camera that supposedly would switch between its normal camera and an infrared cut filter just when it detects that the low light in the area has gone low. So I got myself one of these and it was pretty cool. The second I plugged it into my computer and booted up the camera app, I was able to test turning off the lights in my room and I saw the infrared kick on immediately. It was really cool. It has infrared LED emitters on it it, so it sort of provides its own light source. And I posted a short sharing this camera, and this is where the folks who really know about infrared jumped down my throat saying, that's not a real infrared camera, or this is not a real night vision application. To which I said, it lets me see things when the room is dark, which is actually kind of the entire thing I'm going for. So if you know more about night vision, or you have a proposed different technology you would have used, absolutely let me hear about in the comments below, but just know, I don't care. Now with the camera in mind, I wanted to go figure out what computer or tiny screen device I would be using so that I could see it locally, but also stream the video feed back to a desktop. I found these Unihiker K10 and Unihiker M10 boards from the brand DF Robot. So I reached out to DF Robot and they were kind enough to provide a sample of each for testing with this build. Right off the bat, the Unihiker K10 was honestly pretty impressive and I thought I was gonna use it because for literally just a few bucks. It had an onboard camera that out of the box immediately started feeding video, but it was attached to the board with a ribbon connector. So upping it to a good infrared camera wasn't as simple as just unplugging and plugging back in. So even though this is a pretty awesome board with a lot of onboard sensors and definitely some interesting IOT applications, I realized pretty quickly, I wanna check out the beefier Unihiker M10 board. Now the Unihiker M10 can be connected to your Wi-Fi. You can program it from a desktop top using Jupyter Notebooks, which is just such an easy Python IDE, web-based. So basically out of the box, everything you need to start building cool programs with no software set up, anything complicated, which meant I could grab a rather simple OpenCV Python program to have the board scan for USB connected cameras, start feeding that to the screen, and then using a remote desktop connection, I was able to just view what the screen was currently seeing from my desktop. 
Also a cool feature, I'm also able to control it from my desktop if I want to. So I could even start up or stop programs from my computer remotely. So the last piece of this whole thing was powering it remotely so it didn't need to be plugged into a wall outlet. And this could not be easier because this is basically a computer designed to be plugged into a USB-C port on a wall outlet. Any portable rechargeable power bank will work. So I got a nice slim one that actually is pretty beefy and has a few hours of runtime on it. But more or less any portable power bank that you probably already have sitting around could keep this thing running. Now it seemed like I had the core technology figured out so it was time to make this helmet look incredible. And starting from a 3D printed helmet, I didn't actually know the proper way of finishing this so I went for a method I like to call guess and check. So I grabbed a primer that specifically called out that it was good on plastic because I figured that no matter how I painted this, I would want a good smooth primer finish to start. And just hitting it with the white primer already had it looking pretty cool. So I left it at this stage to do most of the electronics hookup. Now starting with the camera attachment, I basically designed a three rectangle system in SolidWorks. The first one with little corners to hold the camera inside a box that would protect all the infrared elements and the lens itself. The second one essentially had an inlet for the cable and then a 90 degree turn so it would be routed toward the helmet. And then the third one was just a sloped standoff so that the camera actually didn't catch too much of the helmet itself in the feed when it was running. So with just poking a little hole through the side of the helmet, I was able to connect the camera to the side of the helmet, get the cable routed on the inside, and we were cooking. Now maybe the biggest trade in this whole build and the thing I accidentally split the internet on when I posted a short talking about this is whether I should try to hide this entire screen inside the helmet somewhere or build a hinged standoff mechanism. My eyes just could not focus on the board anywhere inside the helmet that I had room to hide it. But I also kind of wanted to challenge myself to a hinged standoff mechanism because again, people are split on this, but I thought it looked really cool having a helmet top mounted system. Plus you don't compromise any of your visor space when you're not using it. So in total to make this mechanism work, I designed a screw plate for the back to mount the Unihiker M10 board too. Then I found some already existing hinge files on Thingiverse that worked perfectly for a 180 degree swing. And then I designed this cable standoff that could conceal the cables on the inside where I poke it through the helmet. And then a little bit of extra sloped surface area so I could build a really strong adhesion between this standoff and the helmet since it is holding a little bit of weight with the board mounted on it. Last thing to mount, the battery pack was once again the easiest part. There's just all kinds of room in the EOD helmet to kind of where the cheeks are. And so I was able to just mount it to the side with the ports exposed in a spot that was really easy for recharging, removing it if you have to, and plugging the computer in. And I was so pumped that all the 3D printed pieces and electronics went well together that I almost took this white primed 3D printed thing and called it done. But I decided to challenge myself to make this thing look epic. I found a paint scheme from Galactic galacticarmory.net for the EOD that looked really cool. Basically two-tone forest green and black. So I got myself some green and black spray paint, spent a lot of time taping, did a few layers of each color, and I'm so happy with the colors and how they came out. One of the final technological challenges to this thing was that the actual computer and hinge mechanism was not staying up when I wanted it to stay up. So I actually got two rather strong magnets and I put them just a little bit offset where there's some serious holding force when it's at the top. Now, now, with everything finished and put together, let's just get some cool shots of this thing in action.
I definitely noticed that the effectiveness of this dropped off a fair bit at any kind of real distance. And I think that's to be expected with like a $20, $25 infrared camera. But the cool thing about this build is I think it would pretty naturally size up as you could afford nicer and nicer night vision cameras. So I'm actually really thrilled with these results. Now having the camera with the infrared emitting lights on it does give kind of a red glow just to the side of your head, which admittedly would be a disadvantage in combat as in the darkness of night, you would be giving people a glowing target. But let's keep in mind that if you're wearing a 3D printed halo helmet in combat, you probably weren't going to make it anyways. And more or less with basically a finished and buttoned up project, the last thing I did was I added a matching paint job to my Magnum because the first thing any new Spartan is gonna say is that they need a weapon. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This style of video is a little bit new for me. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Be sure to let me know what sort of ideas for next project you have for the channel. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to Lamaster Tech, and if you really love the content and you want to help me grow, check out the Patreon in the description below. And of course, all 3D print files, all code, all technology that I used, all hardware will be linked in the description below as well. Let me know with any questions and let me know what we should do next. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.